Hello. I started the um, disassembly of the throttle quadrant now. Um, the first steps are yeah, just take out some parts which are not needed. For example, this is some kind of lever for the plugging brake. Um, I put it off and uh, at this place there will be um, a small servo motor which just um, yeah, might push this up or down or some actuator, uh, I'm not sure yet. So the next uh, thing I'm working on is just get rid of the cables, at least get rid of the plugs. Um, I will need this space down here on the bottom to install some base plate for uh, the trim wheel motor. Um, <clears throat> uh, basically I follow the manual um, I get from uh, the cockpitbuilders.com site. So there are uh, some people who already managed uh, to motorize uh, the quadrant and I just uh, yeah do it the same way. So just hold on a second. Um, maybe some words about the mechanical features of this quadrant. Just put it down here. So, <clears throat> ah, this way. Okay, maybe some words about the mechanical issues. So, first of all, I have a main axis here. Um, the main axis is driving the uh, trim wheels. You have these kind of tooths here and um, the trim wheels are have also these tooth inside so are they put on here. Yeah. So it's like a, a form fixed connection and then the trim wheels are um, secured by some taper by some taper screws. Um, some word about the levers. Um, as you can see here, I move the levers and the thrust levers um, just turn this uh, wheel. Um, on this wheel, in the original state, you have some cables uh, running down here. So the uh, movement of the levers is transferred to some steel cables and um, basically then onwards to some um, uh, fuel valves, I think. So about the reversers. Uh, if you just move the thrust levers, uh, we know that uh, the wheel, these discs are moved. Now if I put the levers back to idle and then go for the reversers, you can see here that the, the disc is moved in additional um, way and uh, yeah, so this is basically how the levers work. Um, the lock system for the levers, actually if, if everything would be assembled. I, I cannot uh, pull the truss levers. This is uh, the reversers. This is only possible if I'm if I have the, the levers in idle position. And uh, the reason for that is just get some lights here. There are some tooths here and uh, in the assembled condition you have a kind of a plate here. Um, and in this plate you have a kind of a two holes on the side. And only if the levers are on the back side, you can see here if I if I pull the reverser, they go inside. And only at this position, you have these holes here in in this middle plate. So if you have the levers in the front, so these these small tools are kind of blocked. Yeah. Of course now they can move. Um, so what else is uh, worth to mention? Actually, uh, this is the uh, speed brake. This will be connected wire this rod to some uh, strong small servo motor. Um, some word about the trim indicator. This is this small dial here. Um, actually this is uh, moved by uh, some uh, lever mechanism. Yeah, It goes down here, goes down here, goes down here and here you have some kind of a small spindle and uh, the spindle here comes out of this wire and if I turn this uh, yeah, you can see the, um, the trim indicators is moving uh, on both sides so they are mechanically connected. Um, what else is to say? There are a lot of uh, 
switches here inside yeah you can see here a lot of uh, micro switches for uh, the various positions um, I will leave them inside and just use the connections so I do not have to rewire everything again okay that's for the uh, TQ now maybe some words about the cockpit so here you can see the cockpit at the moment it is everything is turned off so just that you get the impression so I have the wood frame here it is covered with some cardboard at the moment I think it's okay as a first step um, what I definitely need to do is um, of course install the throttle quadrant after that I have to think about the yoke because I'm not satisfied with this solution and uh, I know that on the website where I bought the TQ that the yokes of the same plane are still available for sale so um, I have to save some money and uh, probably I will, I will buy them so then here some word about uh, the 737 cockpit companion by Bill Buffer uh, this was a present of a, of a friend of mine uh, I really can suggest this for all home cockpit owners it's a kind of a um, very very um, compressed manual for the uh, 737 explaining all the different systems um, it's very good if you need some informations uh, very fast it has some explanations about the fuel system the hydraulic system there are some charts inside um, I did not have the time to read everything but um, I'm sure this is a very good book uh, it's not very cheap I think it's about fifty dollars but um, I can highly suggested okay so then maybe some words about the cockpit itself so here you can see the 340 inch Toshiba LCDs um, if I fly I just put them like this so and then from the inside you have a really really nice uh, field of view uh, probably I could install a, a fourth one because I, I have the same uh, LCD in the living room so I have to try it um, so then here is a small sound system with some subwoofer uh, okay so probably it's too dark here but uh, yeah this is the it's the back side of the, uh, of the home cockpit okay now the the main uh, switch went off because if I plug it in sometimes it just draws too much power so okay this is just one a short impression of the uh, cockpit at the moment and uh, yeah stay tuned and thanks for watching goodbye